Welcome to the EKG Guy, if this is your first time. I'm glad you're joining us, and welcome back if you're returning. So we've been going through our EKG coding reference guide, and now we will be looking at right axis deviation. So we're in part four, and in this lecture, we're going to look at right axis deviation. And we're specifically looking at the ventricular access. So if you don't have access and you need access to our online uh, reference guide, you can put this into your search bar. You can enter your email here. You'll click submit. You'll check your email that you entered. You'll go to a link that is in the email, which will give you free access to the coding reference guide, which is available here. We've gone through part one, where we looked at the general features, as well as atrial abnormalities, both left and right. We went through rhythms. We went through sinus, atrial, junctional, and ventricular rhythms. And we looked at conduction blocks in part three. Now in part four, and we're looking at access deviation. So before we get started, just wanted to make you aware of our course in our books that are available, you can go to www.ekg.md, okay, and go to our course, and you'll see a number of our books available there. And we have hundreds, over 500 lectures. Uh, a lot of them are on YouTube, but our separate course and those videos are not on YouTube, so you can check them out there, okay? So let's get started. So right axis deviation, you know, determining axis is always a difficult thing for those that are beginning and learning. So let's try to simplify it, okay? And there's a few things you have to know when we're talking about axis deviation, as we're describing, we're talking about the ventricular axis, okay? In the ventricular axis, you may see it on the EKG as the R axis. And that way, we are looking at the QRS complexes. Now, there's an axis for the T wave, the ST segment, the P wave, and so forth for pretty much the, all the intervals and segments and waves on the EKG. But in this case, we focus on the ventricular axis, and we look in the frontal plane. And because we're looking in the frontal plane, we use the limb leads. Okay, and if you recall, the limb leads in our standard 12 lead are located here. Okay, so these are the standard limb leads, and we'll use them to determine the axis in the frontal plane. So notice one, two, three, AVR, AVL, and AVF. And then over here, we have our precordial leads in the horizontal plane. So we won't mention much on them as we'll be determining the a ventricular axis in the frontal plane. And what you need to know is where the leads are placed and our quadrant system. So here's our quadrant system, and if you're new to it, you want to put this to memory because this becomes very important. So this is where zero degrees is, and you pretty much are doing a circle. This is positive 90 degrees. This is positive 180 degrees, okay? But going the other way, going this way, this is the negative 90 degrees, and this would be negative 180. So you can see, depending on which way you go, this is negative way, and this is the positive. And why that's important is because the normal ventricular axis in adults is between negative 30 degrees, okay, and about positive 110 degrees. So all this is considered normal. When we talk about right axis deviation, we're talking about a shift to rightward, which would be in this direction. And the rightward axis is between this region here, that positive 110 and positive 180. So this is what we call right axis deviation, and that'll be our focus in this looking at the CKG. Now going leftward, okay, so from negative 30 to positive 110 is normal. This is what we call a left axis deviation. So in this region here, negative 30 to negative 90. Okay, and then up here in this region is what we call a right superior axis. Okay, as it's right and superior, so in the right direction and going upwards, or a northwest axis, because this is north, this is west, and so they call it a northwest axis. Okay, you may also hear it as no man's land. Not many rhythms show up there, but you may see ventricular tachycardia with an axis in that direction. So let's look here. So we said that the right axis deviation is between positive 110 and positive 180. Okay, so that means in this region here. So we also have to know where the leads are placed. And the main leads I want you to focus on when determining the axis when beginning, and there's many ways of doing this, I want you to focus on lead one, and this is where the positive end is, and lead AVF is down here, the positive end of AVF. 
okay? So when we look at this, we're looking, are the complexes mostly positive or negative? Meaning, are the complexes heading towards that lead or away from it when we look at it? So if we draw another quadrant system, okay, we are going to put our leads here. So here's lead 1 and lead AVF. And these are the positive ends. So if you have an upright positive complex, it'll head towards that lead. And if it's negative, it'll go away from it. So let's look here at our lead. So in lead one, okay, notice these are our QRS complexes. Our they represent ventricular depolarization. So the QRS represents ventricular depolarization. And this QRS is mostly negative because if you had a baseline, Notice it's mostly negative. So if we were to draw that, the complex pretty much looks like something like this. And if we draw our baseline like this, you can see that most of it is below the baseline. And that's what we consider a negative, meaning it's going away from that lead. So we said lead 1 is positioned here, and we're going away from the positive end, so we're going in this direction. Okay? So you can draw an arrow going in the opposite direction. Now, if you look at AVF, AVF is down here. Okay, these complexes seem to be mostly positive. So you have a complex that pretty much looks like something like this. You draw your baseline through it. You can see that most of it is above the baseline. Okay, so we would consider that positive. So the complex is moving towards that lead. Okay, so towards it. That means the axis lies somewhere in this direction. Okay, and what else we can do is notice that we said the axis should lie between positive 110 and in this direction. We consider between 90 and positive 110 to be a uh, rightward axis, okay, or right, rightward shift in the axis. But in this case, we're looking at a full axis deviation, so in this region. So how else can we do it? Well, we can look at other leads that would be helpful. We know that AVL sits here, okay? And notice that AVL in this lead is pretty much completely negative. So almost going directly away from the positive end of AVL in this direction. We know that also lead three sits here. So lead three, the positive end. And if you look at lead three, this is pretty much all upright. Okay, so again, going towards lead three. All right, so notice pretty much everything is going in that direction. All right, and so as you can see, these are pointing to us that everything, the axis is lying over here, and that's why we consider this right axis deviation. Okay, now the axis in this, the machine actually got positive 128 degrees. Okay, so where would that fall? So if we were to erase some of this, okay, positive 128, we can show it up here, might be easier. So 128 would be something around this. So within that region there, so, okay. So this is a right axis deviation shift. So hopefully that makes sense. Now to simplify things, you can simply do quadrant systems when you're first learning, okay. And I think that's the easiest way. So knowing that this is left axis deviation, this is normal axis, this is right axis deviation, and this is what we call that northwest axis, okay? When first learning, you can do that and use leads 1 and AVL, okay? And if it's going towards those leads, then you have the, the impulses moving towards it, so you'll see upright complexes, all right? So look if it's positive or negative and go from there. Okay, so hopefully that makes sense. Now, there are a number of conditions that are associated with right axis deviation, including left posterior fascicular blocks, right ventricular hypertrophy because the right ventricle is bigger, so you have more rightward impulses heading in that direction, lateral MI, ventricular positioned heart can cause it, COPD because the lungs causing that rightward strain on the heart, pulmonary embolism okay, can cause it from that backward pressure on the right side, you may have a rightward strain, dextrocardia as the heart's now positioned on the right side, so that's one thing to keep in mind, lead reversal, and as well as a ostium secundum atrial septal defect as you have that rightward pressure going to that side, okay, but the main thing I want you to know how to do is be able to determine the axis and notice that the axis here 
in this one is shifted rightwards. So we call that right axis deviation. Well, that's the end of this lecture. I hope you learned something. Now, just to keep you in mind uh, of our course material that we have available. So again, if you go to our website, www.ekg.md, okay? So this is our website. And what you'll notice is that if you go to the EKG course here, okay, you'll find stuff that's separate. So notice that we have a number of topics, practice material, lectures, a way for you to contribute. And this is the course here over here. So you'll notice we have over 300 videos or so, and that's more on YouTube. There's another 100 more than 100, about 200 videos that are available with the course. So those are separate videos. And this course is really designed to take you from a beginner to advanced interpreter, okay? So completely separate from what you're getting online for free, okay? These are um, course material that comes with it. So notice that you have a book, okay? And then you also have the pocket guide available. So you can choose which format. They are the same thing, both these uh, book and the pocket guide, uh, different formats. Uh, I really like this small one because you can keep it in your white coat if you're in the clinic or in your pocket and it's really available on the go. Now with the book, you also get videos. So notice these are the videos, okay? And these are a video for every single page in that book. So it's over 30 hours of video. Now there's a number of practice material that I continue to upload there. Okay, we'll have practice questions coming soon. Uh, so all of that's available. Again, this is separate from all the free material that you get already. Okay, so this is more high yield stuff. This is what we used to teach our uh, technicians here and our students here at Mayo Clinic. And it's used now among many institutions. So use, uh, check that out. Now, what it also includes are calipers. So yes, you get calipers with this course, okay? Um, I don't know anyone else that offers that, but you do get calipers. I think they're very helpful and they can, uh, you know, if you know how to use them correctly, uh, can help to identify different uh, arrhythmias that are going on, okay? And then you also get our pocket EKG reference, okay? This was something we've put together as we were developing course for the fellows. Uh, and this is really nice. It has every code, as you saw earlier, laid out there, very small pocket guide available. I had help with uh, my colleague, Dr. Peter Noseworthy, who's the head of the EKG lab here at Mayo Clinic and editing it. So this is something that we use um, and we found very helpful. So go to the EKG course, you'll see examples of lectures, okay, why we developed this, okay. A lot of it came about from myself struggling with learning EKGs, having a father that was an interventional cardiologist and, you know, still struggling. So uh, my struggle is a struggle that I don't want you to have in learning them, okay. You can read all those introductory books, but honestly, they are not uh, enough, okay, and you find yourself using other resources which is part of the learning process. I wanted to expedite that process for you and make it less uh, inefficient uh, in pretty much what I struggled with going and learning through EKG. So again, from beginner to advanced level with this course, uh, you get the book, the calipers, the coding reference, video access, okay? And now we're offering 25% off. 25% off, put that code in on checkout and uh, you'll have yourself 25% um, off that will even, it's pretty much covers the cost of what we use to print the material. So uh, we don't really make much off it. It's more to help our learners grow and really be able to contribute to patient care. That's why we do this and we love doing it. So thank you so much for your support. Um, if you have any questions, just leave them below and we're happy to answer them. All right, have a great day.